should we be eating? Should we really be eating low fat dairy? Should we really be eating low fat dairy? Mm -hmm. So the guidelines pretty much say over the age of two. Yep. Still, the yep. guidelines still say this. Yeah. Yep. Over the age of two, you should be having low fat dairy uh, and no full fat dairy. Full fat before you two. Nothing after. I think initially this was due to heart disease risk and dairy research around that, uh, saying that if you had increased serves of dairy, especially full fat, that saturated fat contained in that would actually worsen heart disease and things of that nature. Correct? Yeah, but it's also the extra energy. I'm talking about the reason why they initially <laughs> said low fat. That was the reason. That's it wasn't about the energy. Yeah. So they're, they're talking about that. Um, and then I guess new research has come out probably over the last, what, five years? Mm -hmm. Maybe longer, mm -hmm. maybe less, mm -hmm. uh, around that the saturated fat contained in dairy doesn't actually contribute to mm -hmm. heart disease. There are other factors. So many other factors, and then and there's certain aspects of dairy that they're not quite sure what is actually causing that preventative effect from that Calcium. saturated fat. Some of it, but mm -hmm. they don't. There's other factors that they don't particularly know yet. And as we know, nutrition research is still a young science, really, and we're always going to learn new stuff, which is why the public gets so confused all the time and keep changing our mind about stuff. Um, the other is nobody really has dairy as it comes. So rarely do people just have a glass of milk. Rarely do people just have cheese off the block. Maybe you. <laughs> I don't know you. Um, yeah, or a yogurt that's unsweetened or doesn't have fruit flavoured stuff added to it. So essentially, as food comes, it's generally quite low disease risk. Um, but it's the other thing. So maybe it's the chocolate milk or maybe it's the cereal in the milk or potentially it's the crackers that you put the cheese on and even it's the sugars in the yogurt that you have. Maybe so it's a bacon sandwich with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, so I guess that's what the, the guidelines kind of say. And then obviously the research says this, so the guidelines have some catching up to do, um, but they always do because that's just the nature of it. They need to compile a lot of research to actually go into it so they don't actually keep up. And as a dietitian, we have to make sure that we're staying abreast of all the new research and adapting what we know plus what we've learned, putting it together and giving it to our client. Um, so, so what would be of, the situation yeah. that you would advocate for low fat versus low fat? Yeah. So, fat? I still always advocate for, for low fat for pretty much all of my sports clients. Uh, a lot of them. That energy. No, I didn't talk about energy fat. yet. So full fat, yeah, for disease risk. But I'm about to talk about weight management. Mm -hmm. I'm about to talk about how every athlete comes and they want to stay as lean as possible while also gaining mass. Um, sometimes you can include that fat dairy or full fat dairy in if they want to gain mass and they can't eat enough. So it's a good little win. Because um, if, if we know it's not going to increase heart disease risk, but it's going to increase their calorie intake and then get them closer to their goal, sweet. Um, but what if you have that, someone who can't tolerate dairy? If they can't tolerate dairy, get lactose free milk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty simple when it comes to that. Simple's pretty all right. Um, soy, I don't particularly like, so I don't like recommending it unless people really like it. Plus, the protein contained in that is not as bioavailable as what it is in dairy milk which is why I choose it for athletes. Um, look it up. <laughs> um, we can talk about it later. Uh, but basically, I, I would recommend low-fat dairy, usually, like, especially yogurt, um, cheese. Not doesn't matter to me as much because usually they're not eating as much of it. Uh, and then milk, um, because a lot of these guys might, or girls, might be having two to three large glasses of it. Um, I tend to cut back the calories in that so that I can bump it up in other things. So if they're having additional carbohydrates elsewhere, if they're having additional fats elsewhere through nuts and stuff like that, those other fats other than the saturated, because even though it's not contributing to heart disease, it may not actually be cardioprotective either. So there's things to be aware of. And that's kind of how I look at dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was also good research last year in relation to the vehicle of that dairy food. So, like I've already alluded to, in relation to the sugars and the carbohydrates and things like that, um, you know, potentially things with cheese, is everyone thinks that cheese is obviously not good for them. If you take the fat out of cheese, it's really not cheese. Um, it's supposed it? to be a high fat product. It's, you know, flaky rubber and people throw it around, it's got no flavour. So, um, 
yeah, so I suppose when it comes to cheese, cheese finds its way into everything. Um, early on, you know, when they had an influx of milk because dairy farmers decided that, hey, let's just, you know, make shitloads of milk. Um, you know, there was an, a lot of byproduct of that. And so therefore, you know, Americans decided, wow, we've got way too much milk, let's just shove cheese in everything. Um, and so therefore it became in processed cheese, snacks and burgers. And anyway, I could go on. But if you were to say do it the French way um, and you say had a small amount of you know brie or camembert or something like that and you were having it as part of the pie with lots of veggies and stuff like that on it and you were eating it in an appropriate way versus putting it in your wraps, your sandwiches, you know, your snack foods that are cheese flavoured, then in that way it's probably reasonably healthy to include in a diet that doesn't need to be a low fat form. So, and even in the guidelines per se, they do suggest that you can have up to two to three serves of full fat cheese per week and there's no issue. But if it's finding it way, its way into every single meal or snack and you're having that daily, then I'd probably suggest that you do choose a really boring, bland, low-fat cheese um, or decrease the frequency of having a really tasty I still like cheese. low-fat cheddar. Low-fat cheddar is the bomb. Yeah, well, you know, that's when we can manipulate the recommendations to suit. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I suppose that's what I'm coming at is that, yes, we have those guidelines, but then you need to change them. Um, if you've got someone that obviously needs to put on weight. Yeah, then you can add it in without too much thought around mm. any further disease implications. It's more around just trying to reach your calorific goals. And what about in the elderly population that you work with? Oh, yeah. With? Smash them. Mm. So I, would, I, would, I was saying the other day, I, pretty much every client that comes to me that wants to gain weight, there's at least three to four serves of dairy. In that and in the older population obviously we know that the calcium needs are a lot higher bone health and all of that but in terms of gaining weight dairy is a good vehicle for high bi biological value protein so you can get a good smack of protein in a serve of dairy um, so that's an easy vehicle especially if they, if they like drinking milk or they love cheese like it's a good vehicle for that protein so that's kind of why i would do it with an older population the same way that i would do an athlete i kind of treat older people who want to gain weight similar to an athlete really in terms of what I'm giving them and making vehicles really easy to consume so they can consume more because as we know older people don't tend to have the best appetite especially if they've been losing weight unintentionally um, and athletes often can't eat enough to reach their goals so both kind of work hand in hand and that's how I would use it but yeah at least three times a day at least. Mm -hmm. Is there anything behind weight gain and milk as in so for example when my child was little and maybe still now she's on milk so you know is there any effect of say you know hormones in milk that stimulate or promote more gain because actually it's supposed to be growing little humans and little calves what are you talking about what growth factor <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> In terms of contributing to I would, I would say that's more minimal. rapid weight gain. I would say that's minimal in comparison to the protein, the carbohydrate, and the calories that will be coming in. I don't even factor that into my thinking whatsoever. I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. That's good. my answer to that. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I think she was testing me there. But, um, they're I'm always, sorry. no, but they're always questions. They're good. And yeah, I yeah, suppose yeah. as a dietitian, you've got to potentially expect the unexpected. And yeah. some of the things that people might ask you are like, and good poker face, Tyson, because that is exactly the face that I would do sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, it's interesting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, you think about it, I'm like, um, I don't really, that doesn't sound right to me, but I'm just going to be confident in my delivery of what I thought is the truth, mm. and I'm now that. Mm. And I'm also, so. experience is key, and yeah, you know yeah. that it works. Yeah, I know that it works, so yeah, I don't really care. How? Because mm. I know. Because mm. I know, and I know the other science around protein and calories and gaining weight and the results that I've got with clients. So mm. I'm confident with answering with it, even though I know Peter's probably a little bit smarter. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> so get your clients on dairy. It works really well if you can modify the size. Um, as well as maybe the type sometimes it's more beneficial than say for example suggesting an alternative a lot of people that come and see me uh, are not having much dairy at all apart from yogurt um, and really won't have standard milk um, but if i'm seeing someone for weight management you know particularly i always emphasize 
have a coffee in between meals. Um, it's portion controlled. There's not really any sugars. We don't need them because it's quite nice if you get a good one. Um, so I really advocate things like that to include. <laughs> um, and I have one daily. So. so yeah, long story short, <laughs> low fat or full fat doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Depends on your requirements, depends on your needs but in terms of heart disease risk or anything like that, which is why the initial guidelines were developed around low fat, that's kind of out the window now. Forget it, move forward. Individualize. This is the end.